Hey guys, and welcome to this week's episode of Slice Form. This week we're going to be going over computer-aided design known as CAD. These are the type of programs that allow us to take 2D or 3D models and then turn it into a 3D printed object. With these programs we can make things that are purely functional or completely aesthetic but we're allowed to make anything we want. For this week's class we're purely just going to be going over the basics so nothing too too advanced. For me as a teacher I just want to let you guys know about what is available to use and then show you the tools of how to use it so then you as a user can go and actually experiment and actually try and make something really really cool. Um, as a CAD engineer uh, I know all too well just how complicated and deep of a rabbit hole this kind of software gets, but we'll just be going into something that is not not too intensive today. Something that you can relatively understand within all of this week's courses and then start to making something really, really cool. With 3D printers becoming more and more popular and more common in every household, it's more important now than ever to actually learn about computer-aided design. It's perfectly fine if you find a model in Thingiverse that you really like and you think is really cool and then you download it and print it. But the actual skill of being able to make something from scratch and then print it and then use it to actually solve a problem is going to be incredibly satisfying. It's going to be very important for you as a future engineer. Within the world of 3D printing, I find a pretty common path that a lot of people follow. They start out by building it and they're really, really excited. And then they go on Thingiverse and they download a bunch of really cool uh, figurines and dioramas and they print everything they've ever wanted. And then after a couple of months of it, they go, cool, now what? And either two things can happen. Either they put their printer off to the side, never look at it again, and they go, yeah, I have a 3D printer. Or they actually start to use it a little bit less like a toy and more like a tool. And that to me is where 3D printing becomes very, very valuable to the engineer inside of all of us. It is where you can actually start to solve problems by yourself and for yourself. If you ever see a problem that you have in real life, whether it's something in your house, and then you actually design something from scratch to purpose fit uh, and then fix your problem, it's incredibly satisfying. A very common question that I get asked by a lot of people is what type of CAD software do I actually want to download? Uh, there's lots and lots of different options and a lot of them generally get to put into the professional or the hobbyist uh, categories. Generally the ones that are more professional are very very robust and they're a lot of times very specific into each medium. Um, people that work in civil engineering or architecture or mechanical engineering, they will generally all use their own separate software to what everyone else does. There's only a couple softwares that start to fuse and combine lots of different aspects of, uh, of computer-aided design, but some of them do exist. Um, what we'll be doing today is actually be using Fusion 360, which is a, to me, uh, the, kind of, the kind of perfect product where it allows you to have the functionality of a more professional, skilled CAD aid design, but it still allows us uh, a relatively easy use. So that if you need to give a project to another person and say, hey, this is how I made it, it's very easy for that other person to actually see how that process was done. When you're talking about professional uh, computer aided design programs, they can be easily $10,000 per year just to use. But with Fusion 360, you can get it completely free for a year, don't have to pay a cent. With Fusion 360, it is a completely free cloud-based software. What this means is that you'll make an account and all the files that you make are associated with that account. So if you ever need to work on a project at your friend's house or you go across the world and you want to still work on your files, you can just sign into your account on any computer and you'll be able to work on it completely normally. All of the softwares that you'll come across nowadays when referring to CAD are known as parametric design softwares. What that means is that every design feature that you have in your project is a parameter. It's something that you can change. It's an actual dimension. Something needs to have actual information with it. Uh, this is very different to other types of computer-aided modeling that you may have seen. People that work for animation companies where instead of saying, hey, this needs to be exactly two inches wide, they're actually doing a certain amount of sculpting or they may be doing something like a 3D scanner to actually replicate something perfectly. But for computer-aided design that you would more consider for engineers, 
we're going to be working with really exact values that we can play around with. And in parametric design, you've got things that you can change along the way. You'll come across timelines where as you build something, as you add more and more complexity, it actually builds up an entire timeline that if you go, oh no, I accidentally uh, made the diameter of a circle in the very, very first step incorrect, and you've been working on a file for an hour, you can actually roll back the clock, change that uh, diameter that you want, and then continue back on. And that change, that parameter, will then be completely corrected all the way along your entire software. Another way to categorize CAD modeling is by calling it a Boolean function. Uh, a Boolean function is uh, mostly a coding terminology. It's a way of assigning different values to the binary figures. But generally when we're talking about uh, Boolean functions in a CAD modeling, we're saying how to actually make complexity. And that's gonna be either by adding or taking away simple shapes. Uh, a really good example is thinking about uh, a little cup. Uh, if you kind of imagine this as a normal, well, a curved cylinder, and then you subtract, you take away a smaller cylinder on the inside, then you've got a little cup. And if I add or subtract more and more of these simple shapes, then I can get a more and more complex part. So a good thing you can start to do when you're talking about computer-aided design is start to look at real-world objects and start to see them as very, very simple shapes or objects that are then added or taken away. A very good example is a phone, a phone you're probably holding right now. And it's probably kind of a boxy uh, little shape with rounded corners and all the buttons are little pill shapes. And you'll start to notice it is just simple shapes over and over and over again that generally make up most of the things in our world. For this course though, we are gonna be downloading Fusion 360 off of the Autodesk website, and you're gonna be wanting to look up a hobbyist or a personal account. This is the type of uh, account that'll allow you to use Fusion 360 completely free for a year, and then after that you can say, all right, I want to invest in this, or no, I actually don't use it all that much. But it's a very, very good starting point to go off of. Simply go over to the Autodesk website, you can go download, make an account, and you'll just download the program. Now it is a very large program, so if it takes a little while, don't worry too, too much about it. But as soon as you get it running, your screen should look like this. It should look like a blank void, bit of a grid, and we've got all of our tools on the top row. Hey guys, thank you very much for checking out our intro series to CAD modeling using Fusion 360. If you'd like to learn more about Fusion 360 and all of the exciting projects you can make using this tool, then consider investing in yourself and your time by purchasing the rest of this course where we'll work on CNC projects, photorealistic rendering, animated moving models, and much, much more. Within this program, you'll be following a cohort of fellow makers while working in weekly group sessions where you'll be receiving help through curated Discord servers weekly office hours through Zoom with our fellow CAD class team, where we can answer any questions you may have, along with up-to-date PDFs and videos to assist you along the way. Thank you guys so much, and I'll see you on the next one.